Hello students, this is uh, the second part of the motor protection. Uh, as we know that in first part we have discussed uh, some basics about the motor protection, about the importance of motor protection, why we use the protection, uh, some analysis uh, about the faults and uh, the earlier protection strategies uh, that we are using so that are the basics uh, which is uh, very important to understand and on the basis of uh, that lecture uh, we are studying its second part which is uh, about the core uh, motor protection strategies and also the faults so we will discuss some issues uh, related to the motor protection uh, which involve the mechanical issues as well as the electrical issues. So we will discuss one by one according to its importance and other factors. So the first uh, issue we have the steady state uh, temperature rises. So in this case, uh, as we know that in the interest of maximum efficiency, electrical machines should be loaded as close as possible to their permitted operating temperature limited. So as we uh, have discussed in the last lecture also, that if we exceed from, a, uh, from their permitted operating uh, parameters, so it will be very difficult uh, to uh, protect motor from fault. Uh, so uh, excessive thermal stressing of any uh, uh, appreciable duration must be avoided if the life of the insulation is not to be shortened. So it needs to be very much uh, uh, the point of care that uh, we have to protect the winding or avoid any uh, stress on the motor. So, uh, like you can uh, see uh, in the graph, uh, under steady state conditions, the temperature of the motor will, will rise exponentially uh, due to the dissipation of the heat to the environment. Uh, since a motor is not a homogeneous mass, heat is dissipated in several stages. Uh, so, the temperature rise and fall take place according to a series of a, a partial time constants which you can uh, see from the figure uh, we have divided that single and the time like t is the time constant uh, small t is uh, representing the uh, duration of temperature rise uh, i n is the rated current theta n is the uh, rated temperature rise so uh, as uh, I have mentioned earlier uh, that uh, it will rise exponentially so as you can see from the uh, graph uh, especially uh, the time T the capital T that is the uh, temperature rise so till 63 percent uh, you can see uh, there is uh, no uh, that much difference as compared to uh, the uh, small t that is duration of time rise so the small t is the uh, duration of the temperature rise uh, so we can say that the temperature is uh, uh, n the temperature not rise uh, quickly it rises exponentially so we have to uh, focus it uh, upon uh, this factor uh, similarly uh, the thermal overload protection is uh, also needed uh, to protect this stage uh, the next one or the next issue we have the motor current during start and style conditions so as the magnitude and the duration of the motor starting currents and the magnitude 
uh, of the permissible duration of the motor stalling currents are the major factors to be considered in application of overload protection. Uh, these we'll uh, discuss in uh, also in our next uh, issue. But now uh, it is commonly uh, assumed that the machine started a DOL like uh, direct online. The magnitude of the starting current decreases linearly as the speed of the machine increases. Uh, like uh, this is not true for the normal design the starting current remains approximately constant at initial values for 80 to 90 percent uh, like the graph we have uh, you can see that when determining the current and time constant of the overload protection it can be assumed that the motor starting and current remain constant and equal uh, to the standstill value uh, for the whole starting time so in the graph we have a speed and on the right hand side uh, on the y-axis we have uh, the power protection uh, power factor per unit and on the left hand side uh, we have the current per unit so you can see like uh, I said earlier uh, in the 80 to 90 percent or 90 to 100 percent uh, there is a uh, little bit change but uh, if you can see from uh, 0 10 20 30 and 40 percent there is no change so this is the basic uh, concept uh, of motor current during start and uh, stall conditions condition we have the stalling of motors uh, should a motor stall when running or unable to start because of excessive load it will draw a current from the supply equivalents to its low uh, rotor current this is very important uh, like if the rotor is jammed due to some mechanical problem so what will happen uh, the motor draw an excessive current so when the motor is drawing an excessive current it ultimately uh, heat up the whole winding or as a consequence if the protection is not installed uh, the motor winding get heat up and as a result uh, if the proper safety is not uh, attached the winding will burn out or it will damage the whole motor so there are two conditions we will discuss uh, about the stalling of motors and graphs also uh, like the first condition uh, we have monitor the starting current and rotor speed simultaneously there are two conditions like the first one we have if the starting current is high and the speed is also increasing then it is not a stalling current uh, rather than it is a starting current then motor must not be tripped and allow to start the second condition the B if the starting current is high and the speed is not increasing then it is a starting current then motor must be tripped so uh, this is important to uh, understand that what is the starting current and what is the stalling so uh, the first condition as you can see it says that uh, if the starting current is going higher and also the speed is increasing so uh, don't you don't have to worry about it it is just a starting current so it is not a starting current but uh, as the second condition uh, if the starting current is high and the speed is not increasing then it is a sign of a serious worry so that means uh, that uh, the current is increasing but the speed is not so it is a stalling current so in this case to avoid damage the motor must need to be tripped if it is not tripped uh, then and the rotor uh, draws an excessive amount of current till the winding get damaged because there is no uh, over 
करंट प्रोटेक्शन इंस्टॉल्ड एट दैट टाइम और सो दिस फैक्टर नीड्स टू बी फोकस सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट कंडीशन बिकॉज यू हैव टू डिस्क्रिमिनेट बिटवीन द स्टार्टिंग करंट एंड स्टार्टिंग करंट बिकॉज इफ आई कैन से दैट इंडक्शन मोटर ड्रॉ एट टाइम मच करंट वाइल स्टार्टिंग सो देर if uh, one of one of the person not known about uh, that uh, motor uh, draw 8% uh, uh, excessive current so it might be think that the current is increasing so this need to be understand what is stalling and what is uh, a proper operation or what is starting current the second current we have Uh, the second condition sorry uh, the monitor monitors the starting currents and time duration of the current simultaneously uh the first condition uh, we have if the starting current is high and last till the normal starting time of the motor then it is not a starting current rather it is a starting current then motor must not be trapped and allowed to start uh the second one the b part is if the starting current is high and lasts for more than the normal starting time of the motor then it is not the starting current uh rather it is a stalling current then the motor must be trapped with the help of a thermal overload relay Uh, before the stalling uh, with the stand time is reached uh, so as you can see the first uh, part is saying clearly uh, about the starting current and time so if the starting current is high and last till the normal uh, remember that starting time must not be of uh, minutes it is of just a few seconds so if it is not ending uh, then you have to worry it about because uh, a starting current uh, didn't last too much uh, but if it is uh, if it is end so uh, the motor must not be trapped so again uh, this discrimination has to be uh, focused that uh, you have to uh, design a system that can differentiate between the uh, stalling current and also uh, the starting current of the motor because uh, if it is not like that the motor or the protection system uh, must hit a uh, false operation and uh, if a single false operation held the whole system or the whole assembly line uh, can be stopped uh Uh, now we can see the stalling of motors or the stand much about uh, that on the left hand side as you can see from the graph that is about relay operation time uh, less than stall with stand time and uh, relay gives stall protection so as you can see uh, you have the current on x axis and uh, you have uh, time on the y axis Uh, there are uh, two times that one is s uh, that is uh, uh, stall with stand time and other is tr so if uh, the tr is less than uh, ts uh, at this stage so you can call it that uh, rotor is protected Uh, as the case of uh, uh, you have the two graph also the motor uh, thermal with stand characteristic and also uh, the relay uh, thermal uh, characteristic in the second graph we have uh, uh, same operation but at this stage uh the important thing is that uh, the tr uh, is less than uh the tr is sorry greater than uh 
the T uh, the T R. So at this stage, we can say that the rotor is not protected. So this is very easy to understand. Uh, nothing much uh, complex about it. Uh, unbalanced supply voltage. Uh, the voltages supplied to a three-phase uh, motor uh, can be unbalanced for a variety of reasons like single phase loads, uh, blown fuses in uh, power factor correction capacitors. Uh, so in addition, the accidental uh, opening of one phase led in the uh, supply to the motor can leave the motor running uh, supplied by two phases only. Uh, it might seem that the degree of uh, voltage and balance meet with a normal uh, installation uh, would not affect the motor to any great uh, extent. Uh, similarly, uh, uh, it should be remembered that it is not that the unbalanced voltage which is important but the uh, relatively much larger negative sequence component of the unbalanced current uh, because we all know that the negative sequence uh, component uh, is not a good friend of uh, uh, the devices we have because uh, the major uh, problem it causes it produce excessive heat also uh, the wastage of electricity so we have to uh, avoid this uh, unbalanced supply especially in our three phase system uh, other one is uh, the reduction in supply voltages uh, the torque developed by an induction motor is uh, proportional to the square of the applied voltage this is the basic concept we have the, about the motors so the torque developed by an induction motor is uh, proportional to applied voltage uh, therefore any uh, supply reduction in voltage has a marked effect on the uh, developed torque so the reduced torque may cause the uh, motor to draw more current uh, under voltage release may be used for the protection against the uh, reduced supply voltage so for LV motor there is no need for PTs as you can see uh, from the uh, diagram that uh, you have a basic circuit uh, so you have a, a circuit of a three phase uh, motor which is uh, connected uh, to a three phase supply uh, in each phase a PT is connected uh, so you can see a OR gate is connected also so what is the purpose of OR gate here or what is the purpose of that uh, OR gate strategy that it uh, if uh, one of the PT uh, give uh, uh, like we have 0 1 or 0 1 that the output is 1 if uh, one of the component uh, uh, get 1 so it will trap like if we have uh, we have 3 PTs like 0 0 and if the third one is 1 so the signal uh, will be yes and uh, it will trip the motor so we have it has to be necessary that the supply on three phases uh, should be equal uh, to some extent it uh, must not be reduced because uh, if one if uh, any of the phases has less supply so it will get tripped so this is the uh, function of uh, this setup and this is how the reduction is uh, the reduction in supply voltage will damage next when we have the single phasing uh, as we all noted the single phasing can occur because of a non 
closure of one pole of a three phase contactor or a circuit breaker uh, so single phase uh, cause negative sequence current to flow uh, single phasing uh, causes the motor to develop insufficient torque making the motor to draw excessive current and uh, finally uh, leads to burnout uh, unless the motor is stripped so there is a thermal limit on the amount of the negative sequence current that can be safely carried by the motor uh, as we all know that the heat liberated due to the secondary current we can uh, so the, the negative sequence current uh, we can uh, write it like i square t so because it is a power loss so we can uh, uh, use uh, a relay which can detect the negative sequence current so when a negative sequence uh, current is detected so uh, we can also uh, check that if there is a single phasing occur or not the fault we have uh, the earth fault uh, fault which occurs within the motor windings are mainly uh, the earth fault caused by the breakdowns in the winding insulations so this type of fault can be very uh, easily detected by means of uh, an instantaneous relay uh, usually with a setting of uh, approximately 20% of the motor uh, full load current connected in the uh, residual circuit of the three current uh, transformers along with that care must be uh, taken to ensure that the relay does not operate from a spill current due to the saturation of one or more current transformer uh, during the initial peak of the starting current because as we know that this can be high as uh, 2.5 times of the steady RMS value so earth fault can be uh, happen uh, on the motor but it is not very much difficult uh, to eliminate uh, the other one is uh, phase to phase fault so as we all know that uh, uh, greater amount of insulation between phase winding faults between phases uh, so many uh, phase to fall, uh, phase fault occurs in the three phase system so as the stator windings are completely enclosed in the grounded metals the fault would be very quickly uh, involve earth which would uh, then operate the instantaneous earth fault protection so uh, we can also have the differential protection uh, in this case we can use uh, which is important uh, in terms of uh, protection of motors against phase to phase fault but if the motor is uh, connected to an earth system there is, uh, that doesn't seem to be any uh, great benefit uh, to gain if a fast operating and sensitive uh, earth fault relay is already provided so uh, the other one is a starting current uh, as we all know that uh, an induction motor draws a very large uh, starting current uh, like six to eight times of the full load current so if the started uh, directed online current that is uh, DOL the amplitude of the starting current may be comparable to the fault current and this is an interesting question also therefore the overcurrent protection provided to the motor must be able to discriminate between a, a genuine fault uh, and uh, an overcurrent due to the starting of the motor so it can be seen uh, like uh, we have the figure uh, in y axis we have the time and in x axis we have the current so there are two relays one we have the over current and other one is the thermal one so remember uh, in this case when the uh, 
starting current is much high or as equal to the over current relay setup we have to use in a combination with uh, the thermal relay so first we will check that if an over current is detected so what is the position of the thermal relay so if the thermal relay is also in the uh, uh, starting or also trip so that's mean there is a real fault but if there is a over current but uh, there is no effect or no tripping at the thermal relay so there is no need to worry about it so we can say that it is just a, a starting current so this is very important or uh, very uh, much important thing to understand that the, when you have to discriminate uh, between the over current or the fault current because uh, if you have simply uh, installed an over current relay so what will happen it has to be tripped or uh, because uh, there is a, a limit of the current and if uh, it is exceed from a certain value that it must be tripped so this much uh, this is a special uh, problem in this case so we have to use these two relays in combination that we have uh, uh, when we have to detect uh, about the reality of fault otherwise uh, false operation or false tripping uh, may be happen and not one time it will happen again and again because every time uh, you start the motor uh, you will face the same problem so this graph needs to be uh, studied very carefully terminal faults uh, as we know that the high set instantaneous overcurrent relays are often provided to protect against the phase fault occurring at the motor terminal such as uh, terminal flashovers so care must be taken uh, when setting these units to ensure that they do not operate on initial peak uh, of the motor starting current which can be uh, 2.5 times the steady state RMS current so uh, you can see that uh, in the figure in the graph you have uh, which shows a typical motor starting current uh, in a transient over current during few cycles when starting a motor so uh, on the y-axis you can see percentage a uh, percent full load current and on uh, x-axis you are seeing the time uh, so you can see that in the first 10 seconds or in 10 uh, first especially uh, first 10 milliseconds uh, the percentage full load increases up to uh, 700 so this is the point of uh, clear understanding uh, that with as with the passage of time or even a one second uh, it will uh, it will going uh, normal now we have the reversal of phases uh, when there is a reversal of phases sequence possibly due to the reversal of phases the motor rotates in a direction opposite to uh, its normal direction of rotation uh, in several applications such as elevators uh, or hoist this is a serious hazard in such situation a phase sequence detector which is generally uh, a part of the under voltage or over voltage uh, protection scheme can be used so as you can see uh, from the uh, figure that uh, you have a motor and uh, uh, it, it basically it is a three phase motor and you have a phase sequence relay installed uh, on the uh, three phases so whenever uh, there is uh, disturbance in a phase uh, uh, in a phase sequence 
uh, in a, uh, so when the, whenever there is a problem of reversal of a phases uh, the phase sequence relay will trip and it will stop the motor immediately because the consequences you can have uh, the reversal of motor and when the motor is rotating in reverse any process uh, you are operating it will uh, get disturbed uh, phase fault inside the motor uh, the protection uh, against phase fault as well as the ground faults can be provided using either the fuses or overcurrent relays depending upon the voltage rating and the size of the motor so uh, most of the motors will be protected uh, by the hrc fuses and hrc fuses are basically the high rupturing capacity fuses and remember uh, the topic we have studied about the fuses in detail that uh, what is the basic uh, working of HRC fuses and why it is used so the fusing uh, current should be greater than the uh, starting current of the motor uh, the fuse operating time should be less than the permissible lock rotor time of the motor so the lock rotor time is the time for which the motor can be safely installed with uh, fully uh, uh, supply voltage uh, applied to the stator so as you can uh, see uh, from the figure there is an induction motor and uh, three hrc fuses on each phase uh, is installed so in case uh, of a big motor what will happen uh, the big motors uh, which are in uh, uh, mega volt or MV voltage motors will need to be provided with an overcurrent protection uh, for the increased accuracy of protection. Uh, the thermal capability characteristic of the motor should be kept in mind uh, by having the data sheet uh, of that motor while applying the overcurrent protection. Uh, similarly, uh, like uh, we have studied the overcurrent relay, uh, so we can also use the overcurrent relay uh, with the combination of uh, uh, its thermal capability. So this is very important to understand in the case of uh, big motors. Uh, in case of big motors what will happen you have the two conditions here uh, like in case of big motors whose kva rating is more than half of the supply transformer kva rating the current for a three phase fault may be less than five times the current for log rotor condition in such cases it is recommended to use percent uh, tage differential protection that we have studied in very much detailed uh, in our lecture of uh, differential protection scheme second case is uh, in case of big motors whose kva rating is less than half of the supply transformer kva rating the current for a three phase fault may be uh, more than five times uh, the current for uh, log rotor condition in such cases over current relays can be relied so you have the uh, two cases of uh, big motors so there is a difference that which relays uh, has to use in combination with and when to use um, so what is the strategy of protecting the big motors uh, there is a circuit diagram so you can see you have a hv induction motor uh, the cvs are installed similarly uh, each phase the R Y B the red Y uh, the red yellow blue uh, there is a 51 uh, phase fault relay installed uh, also the ground fault relay installed so uh, it is evident that uh, the high voltage motor is uh, it's definitely a costly equipment and uh, 
the nature of its installment is very uh, much critical because uh, 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 the uh, the setup is uh, the setup that is associated with and that motor is also very critical because uh, a large motor is installed at that setup so uh, this is a basic uh, strategy that we will uh, use to protect the motor against phase faults uh, so there is, uh, are some also the mechanical conditions uh, which can lead uh, our electric motor in serious condition vibration is one of them so vibration can lead to several mechanical issues inside the motors and likely to happen when the motor is installed in an unstable surface uh, other faults in motors such as loose bearings misalignments and corrosion related issue may cause the motor to have uh, internal vibration as you can see from the picture uh, a man is uh, measuring the vibration of a big motor so because uh, if the vibration is exceeded from a certain value so uh, the rotor get damaged because uh, the alignment uh, of the rotor get mismatched along with that uh, if the motor is coupled with any pump or any other process the process is also uh, get affected so it is important uh, to install a motor on a pretty flat surface with proper uh, uh, installment installing guidelines uh, along with that uh, you have to uh, check the motor vibration periodically uh, to avoid uh, any hazard or damage to the motor remember that vibration will not uh, occurs immediately it will take time or if we uh, measure uh, the vibration on timely basis so uh, it is very easy uh, to protect the motor from excessive vibration and uh, as we know that when the excessive vibration occurs it will damage uh, the motor completely uh, in the few months uh, the moisture in the AC electric motors, uh, the moisture can cause a lot of problems to the motor by causing corrosion of various parts of the motor and particularly uh, the moisture will corrode the insulation and let short circuit between the winding corrode the bearing motor shafts and rotor. So uh, like uh, if the motor is installed in the pumping station or uh, anywhere uh, where the water is in excessive or the open environment where it is it can be affected by uh, moisture very quickly so we have to uh, protect it from the moisture because if the mechanical wear and tear start happening in the motor so uh, you cannot protect it uh, when the damage is done so a proper inspection is needed uh, on the outer shell of the motor also the circuit the loose connection the corrosion uh, factors also needs to be checked in a proper manner uh, dirt is uh, also important uh, environmental condition dirt such as dust and any other uh, some of the you can say the air in the cooling fans the HVAC system uh, we have to face a lot of problems of dust in the motor uh, like the dust particle a small object especially uh, like the small pieces of iron uh, which you cannot see easily uh, so it can cause serious problem uh, again uh, timely inspections and uh, overhauling of the motors uh, can protect these equipment and earlier in our previous lecture that we have studied about the mechanical life of the motor it will increase the mechanical life so uh, remember we cannot avoid fully but we can take care of uh, these 
uh, motors so to avoid the uh, further degradation uh, now the bearing fault one of the most important and the most uh, discussed mechanical equipment in, in case of motors and generators uh, like two sets of bearing are placed at both of the ends of the rotor of the induction motor to support the rotating shaft uh, there are two bearings uh, which are installed on the both ends of the shaft uh, they held the rotor in the place and help it to rotate freely uh, by decreasing the frictions so each bearing consists of an inner and an outer ring called races and uh, a set of rolling elements called balls in between these two races so uh, these bearing uh, will help the shaft to rotate easily but uh, if the shaft is not balanced properly so this bearing will get damaged very quickly and it will uh, cause us a uh, serious hazard uh, which uh, leads to a uh, complete damage of the motor. Uh, now there are some causes and effects of the bearing failures which uh, needs to be discussed. Uh, the first one like we have excessive loads, uh, tight fits and excessive temperature lies. All of these can enable the two rays of the ball materials. Uh, they can also degrade even destroy the lubricants if the load exceeds the elastic limit of the bearing material uh, the second one we have the fatigue failure uh, this is uh, due to the long run of barrier bearings it causes the fracture and subsequently removal of small discrete particles of the material from the surface of races or balls so this type of bearing failure is progressive that is uh, if one once initiated will spread uh, when further operation of the bearings take place for this uh, bearing failure vibration and noise level of the motor will increase uh, the third one we have the corrosion uh, the corrosion uh, is very important if it is in bearings uh, so it will expose the bearings to corrosive fluids such as acids and other uh, minerals or any other corrosive atmosphere so if the lubricants uh, deteriorate or the bearings are handled carelessly during installation uh, then also corrosion of the bearing may take place so early fatigue failure may creep in uh, due to corrosion uh, like uh, contamination it is one of the leading factor of bearing failures lubricants get contaminated by dirt and uh, other foreign particles which are uh, most often present in the uh, industrial environment high vibrations and uh, where are the effects of the contamination uh, the fifth one we have the lubricate uh, lubricant failure uh, like for uh, restricted flow of the lubricant or excessive temperature uh, this take place it degrades the property of the lubricant for which excessive wear of the balls and race place uh, places take place which results in overheating so if the bearing temperature gets too high uh, the grease melts and running out of the uh, bearing discolored balls and ball strike are the uh, symptoms of the uh, lubri lubricant failure so in this case we can also use the graphite uh, as a lubricant but uh, it will cause some other problems uh, the sixth one and the last one is the uh, misalignment of the bearings for this uh, problem uh, or wherein the surfaces of the balls and the races take place which result in rise in temperature of the bearings like if the bearings is misaligned so definitely 
uh, after uh, some to, uh, after some time it will get d-shaped or maybe damage and not only uh, it will damage itself but also uh, the shaft will also get damage so uh, it is observed uh, from the above bearing failures that the normal friction increase which cause rise in temperature of the bearing and increase in the bearing in increase in the vibration of the concerned machine so for this the bearing temperature and vibration uh, can provide useful information uh, regarding uh, bearing condition and machine health so now we are very uh, much familiar about the cause and effects of the bearing failures and also the importance of the bearing in the motors so it needs to be checked properly it needs to be maintained properly uh, so uh, if the proper checks and balances are taken account so uh, these damages uh, may be uh, avoided or uh, in the other sense it will uh, increase the uh, life of the motor so that's all from the motor protection part 2 uh, the next lecture uh, is about circuit breaker protection and uh, the major circuit breakers which we are using in our grids so thank you very much